Hi guys, welcome to this video. Um, this video is a follow-on to one I did when I really started the channel all those uh, many months ago, 15, 16 months ago I think it was. Um, and during that, one of the first videos I did was uh, describing the components I used and put together and a very brief element of showing the performance of uh, this computer. Now I built this computer on a relatively uh, restrained budget, uh, £600 I think it was, um, and a lot of people made comments in terms of, oh, you know, you need to put this on it, put that on it. Well, like um, like happens a lot in the real world, uh, I have a finite budget and a finite amount of money. So everything on the computer is a compromise. And one of the compromises related to the graphics card. Now, it's a tiny little baby thing. It's a dwarf thing. Uh, it's a dwarf graf graphics card uh, in as much as it wasn't very expensive. Um, it's a Zotac GeForce GTX 750 Ti, 2 gigabyte card. Um, which is capable of DirectX 11. And I bought the card purely out of the fact that at the time, the only simulator really I was interested in was FSX, and I wasn't really playing a great deal in terms of uh, online games like first-person shooters or you know key PC games. Uh, I generally used a PS4 for that. So really, top-end graphics wasn't the purpose um, behind buying this graphics card, um, it was one of those compromises where I had the decision, do I spend the money on the CPU or, or do I spend the money on a graphics card? And at the time, I decided to spend it on the CPU, which I think actually was probably the right thing to do. However, now I've got a little bit more money. I've stuck a bit more RAM in the computer. I've got an extra hard drive to stick in, which I'm going to stick in later. Um, I also decided to take the time to change the graphics card. And uh, this is it. Um, and... Yeah, it's not top of the top of the range. It's not um, the most impressive graphics card on earth, but it is a bit better than that one. And this is the uh, the MSI uh, Twin Frozer Gaming GeForce GTX 760. Now it's not a massive step up um, either in price or performance, but when I've had a look at the benchmarks, it benchmarks anything between uh, 30 and 50 percent faster than the Twin Frozer. Now the reason for that. Uh, as I say, is because I changed uh, my flight simulation habits slightly and I went across to using uh, all three simulations between Microsoft Flight Sim, FSX, uh, P3D and DCS, uh, not DCS, uh, X-Plane. So consequently, although I do have DCS, I, don't, I really don't fly it that much. Um, so consequently, the purpose of the video really is for me to take that out, put that in and to see what the impact is on those three sims. I am not going to change any sim settings whatsoever because the purpose is not to see what I can get in terms of optimizing each sim to each card. It's literally just really to see what happens in terms of the performance by just changing the card. Obviously, after that, I'm going to sit down and optimize the sims to the graphics card. Uh, but at the moment, this is literally just seeing um, about plugging it in uh, making sure the computer is fine, and then seeing what the impact is. So without further ado, I'm just literally going to start firing up simulators, and we will have a look at the FPS performance uh, in each of the sims. And what I'll do is I'll set up identical scenarios in each sim, and we will have a quick look at it there. So uh, I shall speak to you guys in a moment. So here we are, guys. This is FSX at Innsbruck, uh, Lima Oscar Whiskey, India. We're on the, uh, on the active runway. Uh, just so you're aware, we've got building storms weather active. The scenery here is different to P3D. This is the approaching Innsbruck scenery from Aerosoft. And I also have um, Ultimate Traffic 2 working as well. So there's a couple of add-ons going on here, um, which is why it is what it is. Uh, the frame rate you can see in the bottom left depends on where we are, where we move around in the cockpit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to standardise it. Um, and I've got uh, Fraps set up. And the Fraps uh, counter you'll see is going to do 20 second recordings when I select it to do, the, to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a 20 second recording with the frame rate average now, just looking out the front. And I'll do fairly static viewpoints for some of them, just so that the frame rate can be given a chance to balance and in effect it, it's fairly even between the, the, if you like, the I can replicate it more easily between the two uh, graphics cards, if, if that makes sense. 
So you'll see it go green, it counts to about 20 seconds, which will be the longest 20 seconds in the world because I've got to sit here and uh, try and make sure that I don't move the screen or anything like that or any nonsense. Um, I do have a number of background apps running um, which will make a difference to the FPS. Um, in all three sims, you can see it's just come back with a red there, um, it'll make a difference to the FPS in all three sims, so in uh, FSX I've got uh, Easy Dock running, I've got FSX itself, I've got Fraps, um, and I've also got Ultimate Traffic 2, uh, I think it's Rex Soft Clouds, Innsbruck, Approaching Innsbruck Scenery by Aerosoft, um, which is very old, but I have to say it's the best scenery I've come across so far for, uh, for the Innsbruck area. Um, if any of you know any other scenery, then give me a shout, let me know, uh, that'd be much appreciated. Um, but the element here is going to be to capture three sets of recordings in terms of the the actual aircraft. Um, so let's just move out so that we're not stuck there, wondering what on earth is going on. So this is the aircraft from outside. Uh, what we'll do is we'll do a 360 degree pan and we'll see what the uh, what the frame rate comes up as. Um, so if we can. No, this camera's not going to let me do it, is it? Standby caller. Your call is important to us. Uh, da -da -da. Left wing. Point of view. Get rid of that. Hopefully that will allow us to, uh, to move around a bit. There we go. So let's try that again. We'll start at the front and we'll, uh, we'll work our way around. Looks quite reasonable in this uh, in this texture with everything lined up. Looks like uh, looks like it's all working uh, exactly as it should. As I say, it's uh, it's Innsbruck Lowy. It's quite an old scenery package, um, but there we there we go. So let's do our benchmarking again. Set it off, and we'll uh, we'll do a pan round. See if we can get round 360 degrees within uh, within the 30 seconds, 20 seconds I should say. Um, I can't even count today. This is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And we nearly made it. Um, we'll just come back round to the front. And uh, that's that. So, next stop, P3D. Uh, in fact, my apologies. Next stop's going to be getting airborne, and then we'll do P3D. So what we'll do, um, we will get airborne, and just at the point I rotate, in fact, I'll start it now, um, and 20 seconds should be more than enough. So, let's get ourselves going. In fact, I'll do it just before I rotate. I'll steer with my feet and then uh, hit the button just before I'm going to rotate. Uh, it's a zero flap takeoff, so we'll uh, we'll look to rotate. I'd estimate probably about uh, 90, 90 knots, 85, 90. Let's start the recording. Get airborne. We do have weather on, so. Uh, I do have to watch what I'm doing in terms of the climb. I'll have a quick look outside for 10 seconds while we're there. And there we go, it's finished recording. So uh, without further ado, let's pause that. We'll go down here to uh, this. This is the Fraps log, and this gives our uh, timings. Um, so this is the, ignore this one here, you can see that uh, there's a difference in terms of the time. So this is uh, airborne with a 750, this is outside with the 750 and this is inside with the 750. So there we go and what you can see here really is the key one is this the average frame rate. Um, so here we've got 53 inside, uh, 45 outside and 51 inside again which, which is all fairly consistent because when you've got the 3D cockpit you would expect um, different frame rates to outside. The outside one's slightly lower because it's got an awful lot more to draw um, but don't forget this is the default aircraft 
So if you're flying something like the uh, PMDG or uh, you know one of the uh, more demanding aircraft, you might expect to see these reversed the other way around. But the the default aircraft in FSX are quite uh, frame rate friendly. So uh, let's uh, let's save that. Fraps log FSX 750. Save. Next up, P3D. So welcome to P3D now. Uh, this is the 750 Ti again. Um, now I've got the same weather setup as FSX. Uh, it's building storms. Uh, you will have to bear with me however. I do not have Easy Dock set up on P3D. Neither do I have the uh, attractive Innsbruck or approaching Innsbruck scenery set up. So this is just default scenery. Uh, it's the default Baron. Uh, it's the default weather system which is uh, building storms. Um, ignore the, uh, the actual frame rate because the rendering is set up differently between the two simulators uh, but fundamentally the key bit here is that all three sims are being run with the frame rates unlimited. There's no point really doing a test in terms of comparing frame rates, rates if you're going to do them in a limited format because that just defeats the object to the purpose of the test. So uh, what we can do, uh, we've got fraps running still so we'll just do a static check of the frame rates whilst we're not moving here in the cockpit same as we did with FSX um, this is just an iterative process um, the only thing I want to change is not the simulators not the locations not the graphics nothing I, I just want a baseline for the three simulators across the two different graphics cards um, and when I edit it down it shouldn't be that long at all so uh, there we go that's it uh, on the inside the baseline done there so let's pop outside and uh, we'll do another one here. We'll start at the front where we did before. You can see the airfield's completely different. It hasn't got that sort of uh, airfield texture in terms of the concrete patches. Uh, likewise, it hasn't got much of the approach setup that you would expect. But uh, there we go. So let's just do our baseline here. You can see it's gone green down the bottom left. This does pan round significantly faster than Easy Dot when I'm trying to use my mouse. So uh, I think we'll probably get back round to the front before it goes. It's not a problem. The, the key is I'm comparing sim with sim. Um, sim against itself, either side of the graphics card. So uh, how long it takes to pan around doesn't really create an issue. And then what we'll do is we'll jump back inside and we'll go for a very quick flight. And I'm going to do the same thing again. Um, I'm just going to take off, but I'm going to do the... Uh, as soon as I rotate, I'm going to start the... Uh, start the button there so to speak again looking for 90 knots again just using the rudder gently to try and maintain center line because of the wind and a uh, little red line by the way is uh, V MCA minimum control, control speed in the air with the critical engine failed at max all at weight A little bit late pressing the button there, but all I've got to do is make sure I'm a little bit late when I do it. Uh, do it with the, uh, the the other uh, GTX 760 version of this, and we'll see what it comes back in a moment. We did uh, jump outside for a little bit. That's P3D doing its silly graphics thing. So it's not quite, as I say, it's not quite scientific, but. Uh, Whee. Right. So welcome to Innsbruck, uh, this is the X-Plane 10 version, uh, it's quite dark outside, I've got no idea why, uh, it's probably to do with the lighting, uh, and potentially also the clouds, if we're under a cloud shadow, X-Plane 10 does that sort of uh, bizarre thing. Um, we are back at uh, Innsbruck, as I say, this is the X-Plane 10 default at Beach Baron, and what I'm going to do is exactly the same things in terms of the test. So we're looking dead ahead. Um, I haven't, although it looks like it's stable at 30 frames a second, I have not got a frame limiter on this. So uh, it is what it is. Um, but X-Plane 10 comes with its own standard little block that's available here for looking at the performance in terms of the uh, frame rate, actual frame rate in the sim, CPU and GPU loads. Um, and so what we'll do is we'll just do our uh, in-cockpit test. You can see it goes green, we've got about 20 seconds to wait. Um, it'd be interesting to see what this come back, comes back with. However, 
do not compare the frame rates between the three play the, the three sims please they've all got different rendering options they're all set up differently so this is the default Innsbruck scenery that comes with X-Plane 10 in the default Baron but the actual rendering options that have been set up so if you look up here in terms of the settings uh, rendering options the options that are available to you are completely different to those which you might find in uh, FSX so ignore that uh, that's not really the significant bit. The significant bit is what we come back with as our average. So uh, let's pop ourselves outside. And we'll do our uh, scan round as we did do with FSX. So start that running. I'll have a look round outside and we'll see what the frame rates come back as, as that. The reason I'm doing this is because it means that I can compare uh, internal stationary, external uh, panning and then internal as I fly around and it will be able to give us uh, an assessment of which sections of which program the graphics card has its greatest effects over. So next one into the cockpit I'm going to do the same thing again, I'm just going to take off and just about at the point where we rotate I'm going to press the right buttons to get this thing to do something. So again, we're going to look for 90 knots. One of the few things I like here, uh, I don't really like the child's play dials in this. They are smoother, they're better animated. Um, I do think that some of the default aircraft in FSX have better cockpits. I do think some of the default aircraft in X-Plane 10 have better cockpits. But there we go. I think that X-Plane 10 handling for the default aircraft is a bit better. Um, but I've done a whole video on that. If you guys want to look at my X-Plane 10 versus uh, FSX video, please feel free. We'll just do a few seconds outside as we look around. You know, it's quite reasonable for me, for a, considering it's default. The only word of warning I would give, by the way, is uh, if you are considering X-Plane 10, there's a massive community out there, but before doing anything else, download the demo, and uh, I think the demo area is Seattle, uh, KSEA. Um, have a look at it, play with it, see what you think. I just wish FSX and P3D gave three demos of limited areas. Uh, X-Plane 10 I think is genius in that because you do get the opportunity to play with it. Um, however, that's enough for the uh, 750 Ti. Next stop is going to be the 760 uh, GTX 760. So welcome back guys, this time with the uh, GTX 760. And uh, the first thing is that uh, I haven't changed anything at all. The only change I had to make is that by default when the graphics card loaded up uh, with FSX it came up as um, a different resolution to that of the screen which is 1920 by 1080 so uh, I've changed it back to the correct resolution for the screen and this is where we're at. Now the outside image looks pretty much the same uh, I hadn't expected any significant change. Uh, the lights look a little bit different but nothing too, uh, too major there and to be fair as well down here with the frame rate um, I wasn't expecting anything to go up in fairness with, uh, with FSX uh, but it's interesting that it appears to have dropped. Um, we were getting anything up to 53 frames uh, per second when we had it on the 750. So uh, let's just do a benchmark there while we're there and we'll see what it comes up with. But it seems bizarre that that's gone down quite so, uh, quite so markedly. Um, so I can't help but think that when I've installed the graphics card maybe some of the graphics settings have changed. So I'll have a look at that in a moment. Um, but fundamentally at the moment it, it seems a bit a uh, bit low so uh, let me just have a quick look at uh, do, 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 do. let me just have a look at fraps benchmarks what's it come up with FSX average 33 so in theory that's dropped 20 frames per second now I can't help but think that that's because of a graphics setting change within the program um, so I'm guessing because I had to change my monitor resolution back uh, if I look at my graphics settings, my display settings, see where we're at. Um, I don't generally have preview uh, DirectX 10 running. Um, don't have anti-aliasing. There's nothing here that stands out as having been changed markedly. Um, yeah, there's there's nothing that stands out in terms of uh, screaming at me to say that. Uh, that anything's changed markedly in terms of the display. So there is the possibility of course that um, the actual uh, NVIDIA setup has changed. Uh, the drivers are up to date so that's an interesting development. Let's just pop ourselves outside 
and uh, we will do our usual sort of scroll around now at this point outside previously we were getting 45 frames per second so we're getting as you can see down here 45 frames per second so it must be something to do with the virtual cockpit that's going on but nonetheless we'll have a a quick test, we'll fly around our aircraft and see uh, what the average frames per second is. As I say, the average previously came out at 45, so you'll have to uh, excuse my easy dock piloting skills, they're not what, uh, not what one hopes for. One day I'll, becoming an e I'll become an experienced easy dock pilot. There we go. However, you can see the frames per, uh, per minute have uh, already beaten me to it. And then the final thing was to, uh, hello, that's not what we wanted, there we go. So back in the cockpit, and actually the frames are still jumping around between 35 and 40 if you look at that, so yeah, that it, it's a 20 frame per second drop and I can't explain why, however, let's get ourselves airborne and see what happens with that. Ah. If you notice, the, the frame rate's gone up markedly, so I wonder if it's something to do with the visualisation of the props. Let me just... No, maybe it's just the way the graphics have loaded. So that's just, uh, I think that's probably just an anomaly there. As I say, we do have weather loaded. I tend to fly with weather most of the time, just purely out of the fact that it's more realistic. Nice glider on the right there. Right, 90 knots. You'll have to excuse me, I'm trying to do two things at once there, set off the recording and also fly the aircraft, which considering the setting off the recording is a couple of buttons, it's uh, easier said than done. Right, so the uh, external recording's finished. Um, I will close this down, I'll load up P3D and I will see you guys in a second. So here we are, back at Innsbruck. Uh, this time we are in the uh, P3D Baron again, um, and this is where it's significant. This is what I was expecting. So this is exactly the same aircraft, the same conditions, the same scenery, the same weather, exactly the same as we had before. And if you look at the frame rate here, we're getting about 65, 66 frames per second. When we did this previously with the 750 Ti graphics card, that was at 47. So we've got, whereas we had a, a negligible change with FSX, this appears to have had a significant increase. So we'll just uh, benchmark that, give it 20 seconds, see what it comes back with. Um, but already you can see that there seems to be some significant difference. You can see it up here, it's, it's going everything between sort of 50 and 80 frames a second. I mean, that's tremendous. It really is quite remarkable. Um, you know, in terms of what's going on. So we've ben benchmarked that. Let's jump outside. So here we are, we're outside. And again, outside we were getting 66 frames a second. And we're up at 80 here, 80, 81. So again, we'll benchmark it, we'll fly around, and we'll see what we get. Get the scenery to load all around it. And uh, the frame rate, I mean, look, on occasions this thing's peaking 90 frames. 90 frames a minute. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean I'm going to fly around at 90 frames a minute? No. I mean, look at that. 82, 81, 83 frames per second, sorry. Um, again, that's just under 20 frames a second more than we were getting, uh, which is remarkable. And it shows the benefit of, uh, of P3D and being able to use a graphics card. But what we will do is we'll do what we did before, we'll get ourselves airborne, and once we're airborne we'll do another test there. So let's, uh, let's steer with our feet and try and use our hands for something different at the same time. <coughs> Bit of multitasking, excuse me there. Uh, looking for 90 knots. I can't remember what the V-speeds are off the top of my head for this aircraft. It's so long since I've flown this default Baron that uh, it completely eludes me. It evades me, so to speak. But 90 knots seems to work about right, so there we go, let's rotate at about 90. And gears up. And one of the things we did do before was we had a look outside. So, I'm 
perhaps uh, want to pee through the sources life out. Let's have a look at what's outside. I'm not very good at flying from the front of this thing. You can see that our um, our actual uh, test has finished now. So now outside we were getting 46 in this, and again we're getting 20 frames a second higher. So. Okay, so before we crash, let's move on swiftly to the final one, which is uh, X-Plane 10. So here we are again, same place, Innsbruck. Uh, they'll be getting bored of me now. Uh, they'll be getting fed up. They'll be calling the police to remove me from sitting at this end of the runway. However, uh, exactly the same conditions, setup, etc., as we had previously with X-Plane 10. And if you remember, our inside frame rate uh, before we had the new graphics card was uh, 30 frames a second. And I commented on it, saying that I hadn't got it uh, fixed. It was unlimited. And look down here, it's uh, 49.50. So let's just do a quick benchmark of that and see what it comes out as. And again, X-Plane 10 um, is known to make better use of, uh, of GPUs. Uh, interesting figures up here. If you look, the figures here for the CPU-GPU usage for the first time the GPU usage now outscores the CPU. Uh, and if you remember previously, it was the GPU that was taking the CPU. Sorry, it was taking the load. Um, so it's interesting there that it's transferred work from the CPU to the GPU, which is the kind of thing that we would have expected. To be fair, um, you know that that's the kind of thing that I I anticipated was going to happen. Um, and it's good to see that it has happened. In fact, there's a fairly even share of the workload between that. Uh, so here we are outside, and uh, let's do ourselves a little tour, have a look around. Now if you remember, the uh, the outside frame rate we got previously was about uh, 39 on X-Plane 10. So uh, again, let's do a quick benchmark of that, and let's see how we get on. Ooh, we'll go the other way for a change now, look. and. Uh, None of the settings have changed. In fact, I haven't even looked at the rendering settings to see if they changed because uh, FSX changed the graphics um, on the assumption that it uh, it thought it was a different size screen to what it was. But uh, obviously, we had to correct that. In fact, I'll have a quick look now. Settings, uh, rendering options. Uh, default. No, it's not changed anything there. Nothing at all. Which is good. So uh, the final thing to do now is we'll just have a quick flight, we'll get airborne, um, we'll see what the computer thinks about that. And again, the average frame rate we had here in the air was about 33, so uh, let's pop the brakes on, bump up the power, away we go, we'll start recording when we get to rotate, let's keep yourself straight. I do like the fact there's a bit of nose bob on, uh, on the aircraft to give you the, temp the sensation that you are going down the, uh, the tarmac. So let's get ourselves airborne. Bit of a late rotate there, and away we go. And I have put the uh, frame rate uh, benchmark on. What we will do there is we'll have a quick look outside whilst we're at it. Now you probably just saw it click click up there. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go to the uh, the log file. I'll uh, have a look at the figures there and then uh, I'll also do a, a little spreadsheet so you can get an idea as to uh, exactly what the performance was in terms of a change and uh, we'll see what we think uh, from that and I shall see you guys shortly. So this is um, this is the kind of end of it all really of what I've been doing um, and this is uh, these are the figures which have come straight out of uh, Fraps. Uh, you can see it comes up with average, minimums, maximums etc. Um, and you can see I've I've just adjusted the titles as I went along so I knew which each set of figures related to. But what you can do is is you can change the figures if you save it. Then next time you run Fraps, and uh, or sorry next yeah next time you run Fraps and the next time you do a uh, a benchmark, it just adds a couple of lines so uh, you don't lose your previous data unless you delete the file. So the interesting bit. Um, here's the figures with the Zotac, here's the figures with the GTX 760 and I've highlighted a few areas over here. Now the bit that was unexpected is if you look at Steam, which is here, here and here, changing the graphics card in every single case 
meant a drop in FPS. So let's just highlight that, that, and that, and that, and then that kind of shows it. So this is Steam look. Steam has had a drop of between 20, I'll say again 20 <laughs> frames per second here, um, six if you look outside which is you know not too massive you know you can still cope at 39 frames a second and you can certainly cope at 50 when it's airborne um, but for some reason sat on the ground in the virtual cockpit um, the drop was significant 20 odd frames a second now that doesn't seem significant until you think that that is a low um, demand default um, FSX aircraft as soon as you start to th stick things like the PMDGs or the uh, top level aerosofts on it, you can expect that to drop even more and probably into the mid 20s I would have thought. Now the caveat here is I was running a lot of background stuff so as, a, as I say I had Fraps running in the background, um, I had Snagit which is the, the screen capture software um, and I also had um, uh, EasyDoc. So this is one of the things why I'm saying don't compare the figures this way because ultimately you can't compare Steam P3D and XP10 because they all have different settings. They have different rendering settings, they have different add-ons, different scenery, everything. So don't compare the figures that way because these figures relate to how I set it up so I like each sim. You need to compare the figures this way. And here's the interesting bit. For P3D and X-Plane 10 there was a significant improvement in frame rates in every single scenario, be it virtual cockpit, outside or airborne. And if you look at this, P3D, um, the frame rates were up by a third, uh, 20% and 50% um, with the new card. And then again, look at X-Plane 10. Wow, the improvement was two thirds, uh, another 20% there, but 50%. Now, of course, the interesting thing here is this box here uh, being airborne and this box here being outside both have significant draw on the system in terms of drawing the external rendering, the, the graphics outside and moving. Um, but yeah, it, it's interesting. It, the conclusion for me is that this is not a scientific test. Uh, I am not a technician. Uh, I'm not an engineer. I'm not somebody who is uh, familiar with programming, coding or any of that nonsense. This is literally, if you like, the bare bones basic test that if I'm Joe Bloggs on the street and I don't know how to program things and set things up. What impact is it going to have if I buy another graphics card? Now, for me, in my circumstances, with my computer, with my setup, I have seen the following changes. You cannot draw the inference that everybody, with every set of circumstances, with every computer, would have similar results. But the inclination for me is that both P3D and X-Plane 10 do benefit and benefit by quite some margin from having a better uh, performing graphics card. The only program that isn't in here is the legacy FSX and it would have been interesting had I been able to have a copy on to see where that stood against Steam, whether that had an improvement or not. Quite why it's had a fall in performance I don't know. Now the fall in performance is significant because I do a lot of my video stuff uh, on Steam. So I am going to have to go into Steam and sort out some of my settings, my rendering settings. Now one of the things you've got to bear in mind is that uh, Steam is um, continually updated by um, the the Steam side of things. So FSX is continually updated by Steam. Um, and there's the possibility, and I say again it's a possibility uh, in my opinion, that it may well be that because of its demands on the CPU, their updates have focused on trying to extract performance from the CPU as opposed to the GPU. Um, whether or not that's the case, I don't know, but fundamentally it's a little bit disappointing that Steam has dropped, albeit, you look at these two figures, they're not marked figures, you know, it's only one frame per second, five, six frames per second. That's a biggie. <laughs> that's a little bit disconcerting. And since I've... Um, since I've gone through all this, I actually just went in and quickly benchmarked the Aerosoft A319 and I was getting 25 frames a second sat on the ground. Um, now the only thing I would say is that that was at a add-on airport with add-on scenery etc. So the scenery complexity has a massive impact on the Aerosoft Airbus anyway. Um, but it's something to be cautious of that you might need to look at uh, changing settings uh, to get good FPS 
dependent on your graphics card. It might also explain why some people have difficulties getting a decent FPS. Um, it might well be that some graphics cards are more attuned to the demands of FSX than others. Um, obviously which ones those are I have no idea. But it certainly seems to me that I've suffered a penalty by upgrading the graphics card to what on face value is a higher grade graphics card. So there's still um, the same memory. Um, in theory when you look at the numbers uh, this is a faster superior card. Um, so quite why that's happened I don't know. Um, but there we go. That's the results guys. Um, I hope you found the video useful. If you did please don't forget to tick like, share or subscribe. Um, and I'm aiming to try and get some more uh, test type videos done soon in terms of airborne testing. Um, but hopefully you guys found this useful and I sp shall speak to you soon. Take care.